All right, guys, welcome back to the second video of trying to figure out why this thing is misfiring. So, in the last video I posted, the misfire or like the white smoke is only coming from the passenger side, and it was white smoke. So that makes me think that it has a blown head gasket. I really don't want to find out the numbers, but I already know what it's going to be. I'm going to do a compression test on all eight cylinders and see how bad it is. First, I had to make sure to take off the serpentine belt because when I'm cranking the car with all the open coolant ports, it's going to start shooting coolant everywhere. That's done. You know, just a little tension that you release the tension on and then you just pull off the belt. So I'm not totally sure what the game plan is in terms of uh, you know the future plans for this car because I didn't really expect this amount of problems. It's either going to be to actually you know fix the problems, which is a lot of work, or to part it out or slash sell it. So right now I'm just gonna you know go through with the compression test and then we'll see what happens from there. You have the keys? Okay. Stop. Uh, I forgot to take out the, sp the spark plug wires in this one. So they're all shot out. Because the first one is 210. Now 200. This one's a little higher just because coolant was shooting out of it because the coolant hose was uh, dripping into the cylinder. So this one's about like, I'll just say 210. All right, and this one is at 210. Now for the passenger side, which is the side I'm most scared of. This one's about 195. It's 190-ish. Okay, about 190-ish as well. I'm really confused. No, this one's at 200. If this has a like a blown head gasket, more than likely I wouldn't have spent an extra 800 bucks to get head studs, gaskets, and all that to fix it. But I'm, re I'm actually like really confused. Let me explain why I want to do a compression test. It was because when I was starting the car and landing at idle, I could see that the smoke was only coming out of the passenger side. And since this has a exhaust on it, it's not really exhaust, it's just a straight true dual exhaust. No cats, because they're gutted. It would only come out of the passenger side. And it was confusing because from the video I rewatched that I posted on YouTube, it looked like white smoke. But doing compression test, the first time the, the compression tester was bad from AutoZone. Like the first four on the driver's side, it was like totally fine, like 200 plus. But then when it came to the passenger side, it would go to like 190-ish and then drop all the way down to 30. It made me believe that the one-way valve for the compression tester was bad and it was leaking. So then I went to go get another one and the first round I tested it it was like 190 and I was like really confused still the second third round it was like 190 like 180 ish so then I looked at an o-ring like I, I didn't really show you guys because I just did it it was like off centered it wasn't where it was supposed to be so then I fixed it and now they're like 210 plus for almost all eight and I have uh, you saw the video of me showing you the numbers that's why I believe I had to do a head gasket test now what I'm gonna do next is make sure for all of the cylinders for the passenger side are not cracked because if it's smoking white which is what I think it is bad head gasket but that didn't show in the compression number test it leads me to believe that the cylinders are possibly cracked which seems like it's like a very unlikely thing because you know I don't know okay the reason why I think that it's the injectors being stuck or just not firing at all is because of why I had to replace these. Now, after I, I look through all the cylinders with my camera, I'm gonna ask my sister to come out and crank it so I can see that all four on passenger side are firing. And also just be sure after fixing the ones on this side that they're all firing as well. So I'm gonna, you know, do this really quick and make sure that none of the cylinders are cracked. Okay, so I think I found the reason why it is misfiring. It's because I see a bunch of oil in the cylinder. <sighs> kind of hard to show, but you see that little glob right? These globs right here? Yeah, that's oil. And it's coming from, I believe that's the head gasket because it leaks from this head and it comes down. So, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I think it also comes from the the second one from the back, right there. And let me just check the rest. I don't think that score is supposed to be there. That black line right there. No oil on this one, so uh, now that I'm looking at it more carefully, there's a fat score right there. So many vertical scores. I'm not sure if this is like normal. It's really hard to show you guys, but. Right there, that huge score. These other ones, these, these are all vertical scores right now. They're, I don't think those are supposed to be there, to be honest. I think it's kind of GG's for this motor. Uh, let me take a couple days to think about it. 
All right, guys, it's been a couple of days, and I'm sitting here in the SE 400. I've come to a conclusion, guys, that it's probably a better idea I part of the car to sell it because of my circumstances and reasoning. My number one reason is that I'm moving soon, and I cannot take this car with me or leave it here. And some of you guys might be asking why I can't just, you know, leave it at my grandparents' house. Well, it's because it's not my space. Number two reason is that the cost of rebuilding this engine would cost more than the car itself, and I don't think that's a good idea. Here's a couple of numbers I have gathered from some research on a gasket set for the whole engine and head studs. Supra store is 657, XAT is 864, and 1UZ is $644. Not only that, but if you guys remember from a couple seconds ago or minutes ago, the cylinders had oil in it and it had a lot of vertical scores. And if I do a full engine teardown of the 1UZ and I can feel those scores with my fingernail, that means I'm going to have to bore it out and then hone it and also get the head milled to be flat. That would probably be, cost more than twice the amount of this car, if that made sense. And for my third reason is that it's probably a better idea that I spend money on my actual, just you know, my, my main project car and build up from that instead of trying to gather all these projects that I want, but you know, I don't just don't have the, the assets to, to do so, if that makes sense. Since I do have a thousand dollars in this car, there are some things on this car I could sell. One being the ECU. If you remember me looking at it the last video, it seemed to have no leaks. I could sell this whole body kit, the front bumper, side skirts, and rear lip, maybe for around 200 bucks, 300 bucks. Can't really get much out of it though, because if you look at it, it's like warped right there. It's also cracked around this whole front bumper. And for the rear lip, a really big crack right here. This is probably for someone that wants to just work on fiberglass or whatever the heck. For the rear subframe, I'll probably sell everything but the axles because the SC300 needs them, at least on the driver's side. I'm more than likely gonna keep these inner fender liners because the ones on the SC300, I didn't do a good job with them. And whenever I'm driving around, when this is not in, it kicks all the dirt into the hinge and it like just makes it look really gross. So I'm gonna modify them so that they are cut more up here rather than down here. And that'll be it for the video series with this car and this video. Hope you guys can come to reason with my reasoning as to why I can't keep the car. Didn't really get to do much with the car, but you know, that's okay. So I have my main car I can mess around with. But hope you guys enjoyed the video and really short series of this SE400. But I'll see you guys in the next video.